we, we love Pete, but we also love Pete Lance. So that's, that's my take home message. Okay, final episode is complete. This is the third to the three part series on peat moss harvesting in Canada. The first person we had on was from the CPSMA, which is the regulatory body for peat harvesting in Canada. The middle person between politicians and industry leaders. And then the second person we had on was a plant biologist specific to the reclamation of the peat bogs after they have been harvested from. And the third person is actually from Premier Tech. So these are the guys that make pro mix and various other different forms of growing medium for us gardeners. And he specifically is involved in natural resource management. So his job is to make sure that the peat is ethically harvested, ethically used in the right combinations with things like compost or whatever the case is, and ensuring that what the product you get is of high quality, but also ethically done. So he has some really great things to talk about. And he even gets into the idea of using a straight compost or a DIY version of potting soil. And he has some really great feedback on what professionals in the industry use and how that's quite a bit different than what we use here. So sit back, relax, and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we're here today with Jean, Pierre Oliver Jean, uh, the natural resource manager for P Premier Tech Horticulture. So can you give me a little bit of an introduction as to what your roles and responsibilities are, um, any designations you have, and what kind of your role overall in just the peat moss industry in Canada is? I'm, uh, our team uh, manages uh, environmental compliance and permitting for the peat operations in North America. And I've been uh, in this role for the past uh, seven years. Uh, Premier Tech is a major professional and retail uh, sub uh, substrate uh, manufacturer. Peat is our main uh, natural resource that we use for producing our uh, substrates. And you also use coconut coir as well too, right? Yeah, uh, uh, coconut coir is uh, part of our uh, product uh, offering as well. It's not a... Mm -hmm. It, it, it's not as big as a uh, in volumes as the, the, the peat that we use, but it, it is uh, one of the components that we use in our uh, substrates. So as a natural resource manager, what is your education or your history in regards to studies or um, collection of information that you've developed over the years? Yeah, I have a, I have a background in uh, terrestrial ecology. Uh, after my, uh, I did a PhD in uh, Sherbrooke University in Quebec, and after after my degree, I worked uh, a little bit in uh, forestry, uh, well, forest ecology research, and to that, I've uh, I've been uh, involved in the natural resources uh, with Permitech for the past seven years. So, uh, it uh, everything is uh, interconnected: the natural environments, the environment uh, where we where we operate where we have an impact so it's uh i think uh being an ecologist uh, by training is a is a great it's it's a great platform for understanding the uh the the concerns that uh, people have in uh, regarding pete yeah absolutely so i guess the reason why i even reached out to you guys in the first place was because as an influencer i've been a gardener a houseplant person for decades at this point. And I never realized that there was this turmoil in regards to the use of peat until I was an online presence. And then I started realizing pretty much every time I posted a video, someone realized I was using peat, I would get at least one or two comments that to me seemed misguided in regards to peat. So if there was one thing that you could take out as a rumor or a misconception about peat, what would that be? I think there is this conception that peat is mostly used for uh, home gardening which is which is true it is uh, widely used uh, for home gardening but it, it's also uh, one of the pillar for uh, professional growers uh, in north america for producing plants and when i say produ producing plant i uh, i i'm thinking about uh, edibles. I'm thinking about uh, food security as well as uh, nurseries for, for trees. Peat moss is uh, the main component of substrates for professional growing, uh, professional growing media. So it's, it, it really has a very crucial importance in, in terms of uh, the supply chain for producing 
uh, in greenhouse and uh, nurseries in North America and in the world. Yeah, absolutely. And is there a reason why, um, because I know you gave me a ton of information about the importance of peat, but why would someone, when we're talking about food security or um, reforesting reforesting a uh, cut block, whatever the case is, you said you worked in forestry. And so what is the purpose of using peat over coconut coir? Is it that it's more effective and it's you know, more guaranteed, or is it just cost? What is the reason for using the peat? Peat, uh, for one, uh, performs really well. It is available locally in North America. It's also from the location and the type of environment where uh, sphagnum peat moss grows. It is uh, naturally exempt from pathogens. That's a very important reason for professional growers that want control over their production and 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 they want uh, certainty that there is no pathogen in in their in in their uh, greenhouse uh, it's also a material that is available in a certain uh, volume uh, locally uh, to uh, make sure production uh, is uh, is achieved so it's it's a very important component for these reasons but also because it, it works very well and it, it performs uh, and and if, if you want to you know we use cocoa uh, as well so it's 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 still uh, it's, it's a very uh, important uh, uh, component of our growing media as well there is uh, with cocoa there's a different it, it comes from from a long way from home it uh, yeah. and nowadays with the all the uncertainties around supply chains and uh, shipping it's certainly there's certainly some concerns over the availability of the of the material i can reuse peat substrate or i i typically reuse uh peat substrates personally mostly because of my pocketbook and then also just because of the fact that we talk about all the time you know reduce reuse recycle there are people that microwave their peat. There's people that put their peat in the oven to reuse it. Should you be reusing peat in a gardener, like a low-key gardener setup? Or should you always be getting new bags? And if you reuse it, should you be sterilizing or do anything crazy like that? Or would it just be more so like a revitalization revitalization with like a compost or a vermicast, whatever the case is? I'll provide my natural resource manager uh, point of view. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not, for, for the record, I'm not a, a horticulture specialist uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the um, substrate science. But what I know about uh, reusing the, the peat is uh, um, most, uh, so a substrate is a mix of ingredients, right? Uh, so it evolves with the, the plant growing. So if you're producing a, a crop in a soil-less uh, environment in a, in a peat moss-based uh, substrate, the, the content of the, the substrate will evolve as the plant grows. So in terms of having a professional grower want to have a control over their production and they want to prevent any um, issue they might have with their production that carry over to the next generation of crops, they typically do not reuse their uh, their substrate. However, as the, the substrate after its its first use can be really efficiently reused in terms of uh, soil soil conditioning, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be used to. Uh, I think most uh, soils can benefit from uh, uh, organic matter and uh, aeration. What uh, what is uh, provided with the the substrate? So uh, it's. We certainly encourage people from uh, for uh, reusing their uh, uh, their substrates, but not necessarily with the same application, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. Clay soils, um, sandies, even loam soils will benefit from like an incorporation or a top dressing of peat. And I actually do that. I reuse some of my peat here just yesterday to plant some seeds. Um, I put my seeds on the surface of my soil and then I did like a top dressing of old potting soil mix just to help with moisture retention, um, germination, that sort of thing. So I do agree with that for sure. Um, so one thing we often see as gardeners is using straight compost. What are your thoughts on this from a uh, natural resource management type person? As a, someone who studied soils, I'm hesitant to 
check off on this due to globalization, leaching, um, just in general, over application can cause lots of nutrient tie ups, things like that. But from your perspective, what do you have to say to someone who's using a straight compost without a peat mixed in or without mixing it into the soil, whatever the case is? We have, we have composting facilities. So I, I, and uh, we, uh, our team uh, deal, uh, with the environmental uh, aspects of these facilities as well. So um, a, a compost in itself, it's a very wide definition because compost can be composed of uh, very different materials. So uh, um, uh, many of the compost available uh, use manure, for instance, or uh, will have uh, different components that may uh, induce a risk for pathogens. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's certainly an... Um, a concern for professional uh, growers and uh, homologation of, uh, of products. Um, there's also, uh, you know, composting is, uh, is, is a process where, where you start with a lot of material and you end up with a uh, very little. So if there's a risk for uh, uh, contaminants, they'll be, uh, they tend to be more concentrated into the finished compost. So uh, mm -hmm. not, not to say that compost isn't important, it's still a very important uh, component, but uh, using a straight compost uh, is, is not uh, necessarily working with, for professional grower, but it's certainly uh, important uh, as a soil conditioner yeah, And also uh, something I forgot to say is also the texture of compost. When a compost is, is finished, it's typically uh, um, very fine in, in mm -hmm. texture. So um, typically what growers will uh, look for is, um, is a fluffy, uh, um, hairiated uh, product. So it, it, it may not uh, work with the professional applications. But it's yeah. still still important as a component. Yeah, absolutely. And I encourage the same thing as a component, not as a sole resource, because we see a lot of this in the gardening community right now is um, like a no dig straight compost mix. And I always try to encourage people to incorporate other amendments in there because we see sometimes really poor growth um, and a straggly looking growth. And I think that that is like you said, from that amplification of potential toxins um, or unnecessary nutrients, whatever the case is. So I do, I do have some concerns with that. So it's good to see someone else's kind of <laughs> seeing it from my perspective too, as it's an amendment. It's great. Um, great amendment. I use it, but it should be used in conjunction with uh, other mediums. Yeah, it, it's important when I, I said contaminant, but sometimes it doesn't doesn't need to be uh, uh, higher. Like it doesn't need to be. Uh, uh, it's not like diesel or uh, yeah. it's, sometimes it, it's it's just like a mineral is yeah. in excess and will yeah. um, impede the growth for different types of crops. So yeah, it's a yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I've seen that. I've seen soil tests before from people's gardens who tested the soil, but they actually just sent in a compost sample. And I've seen some micronutrients just through the roof. And I was like, you're gardening straight compost. And they're like, yeah. And I was like, well, that technically is toxic to the plant. Like, yes, the plant needs it. But when it's in that much excess at a certain pH, you know, it, it does cause issues. So um can we look forward to any new science on the horizon for gardeners or just in the natural resource uh, perspective that you guys are doing? I know there's a big push for um, pH neutralized potting soils. You see that with a lot of like the more bougie high class potting soils. But from my understanding and some of the research I've done with Premier Tech, you guys are already do like a neutralization of the peat itself before it's sold to the grower um, on large scale or small scale. I've seen um, footage of you guys throwing in lime, all that sort of stuff. So yep. what does Premier Tech already come with that necessarily isn't labeled on the package that can benefit your plants? And is there any new technology you can give my subscribers, um, insiders too? Well, there's uh, certainly a lot of uh, exciting research that uh, is, uh, I, I'm sure that in the years to come, we'll see more and more renewable uh, material into uh, mixes. Uh, I feel peat uh, will still have a very important role in, uh, in substrate science. Uh, but uh, what I expect, 
what I'm expecting to see is more re renewable fibers uh, going to supplement the, the peat. Uh, it is exciting for, I'd say, two different reasons. For one, uh, well, it, those, uh, those fibers or these materials will be renewable, which is, which is, uh, which is great. But also it will help uh, reducing pressure on peat uh, supply. Um, we are aware that peat is uh, uh, peatlands are uh, precious areas and precious uh, environments, and uh, it is certainly a resource that needs to be wisely used. So, if you reduce yeah. the pressure on on this uh, raw material, uh, you it it's certainly promoting wise use of peat. That's for sure, and that's another exciting mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, I, I, I think right now there's a lot of uh, uh, thinking around how the climate is changing and how it will change the way we produce crops. And we want to be uh, more self-sufficient in terms of uh, producing uh, our food. And um, there's a lot of uh, traction now with, you know, uh, home gardening and uh, also uh, producing more locally and uh, mm -hmm. in, in greenhouses, for instance. So uh, this will lead to very interesting uh, outcomes in terms of substrate science, that's for sure. Awesome. I want to thank you so much for coming on, Pierre Olivier. Jean, I'm going to, I've screwed that up so many times. I'm so sorry. I'm from Saskatchewan. We have zero French here. No, just kidding. I, if you have any closing thoughts on Canadian peat industry, I support you guys. I understand how important it is to our economy. I don't think people understand the scale in which this industry is used across Canada, not just Eastern Canada. I know that there's some uh, peat facilities even here in Saskatchewan. Any closing comments you want to give the subscribers or information? Yeah, I, I, I just go with saying that our industry, uh, we, we love peat, but we also love peatlands. So that's that's my take home message. And uh, wise use of peat is uh, is uh, the reason why we're here. So yeah, that's I love that's such a good <laughs> that's such a good closing comment. Okay, I want to thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. And we're gonna get the next one on. <laughs> okay, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>